Hey everybody, this is podcast number three in the ecology unit. And now we are looking, um, this is the podcast after your water cycle. So that water cycle should have been reviewed from seventh, eighth grade science, uh, looking at how water moves from uh, a pooling to evaporation to condensation and then precipitation. And so now we need to start talking about the energy levels that are available in a given ecosystem. And we're going to be using this diagram over here to help us do that. So the first thing we need to know is that all energy starts at the sun. Okay, we've looked at this already in the first podcast where the, the, the angle of the sun will give us different climate regions on the planet and how that affects the biomes that are available for, for animals to live and develop in. But all of that energy starts somewhere, and it starts at the sun. Uh, we're not going to get into the chemistry of this, but it's a lot of energy, and it's been doing it for about 4 billion years, and it's going to continue to produce that energy for another 8 or 9 billion years. So it's, there's a lot of energy there that is hitting the Earth, but that total energy is a very... Uh, we get a very small fraction of that total because we are so, so tiny compared to the sun. So anyways, all energy starts at the sun, and then it moves in levels or trop trophic levels. Through the ecosystem there are different levels and these are called trophic and trophic is a fancy word for energy so trophic equals energy okay and we can split an ecosystem up based on the energy that there is available or there and so we're going to start down here so let's draw split this pyramid into thirds Okay, just like that. So we're going to call this level one, and these, this is the producers. And the producers, these are anything plants. These are all plants. Okay, so trees, grass, bushes, whatever. Trees, grass, bushes. Any sort of plant in an ecosystem is a producer because it can take that sun's energy and produce its own energy. It can produce its own food from that. And now notice that this is the largest area of this trophic level pyramid. Okay, So this shaded in red area are the producers. Uh, there are way more producers in any ecosystem than there are of the next level, which are the primary consumers. Primary consumers. And so primary consumers, these are things like insects, very small, or herbivores. Okay, Herbivores are animals um, or organisms that eat only plants. They only eat plants. So they are consuming, so now we're in the second area here. So they're consuming that plant material, and they're the first organisms in the trophic scale to, to consume them. That's why they're the primary consumers. Uh, so now notice, though, this pyramid is getting a little bit smaller. So there are fewer primary consumers than there are producers in an ecosystem. And this is also less energy uh, in the ecosystem. So if we call this 100% energy down here at the bottom, I'll do that in red, keep my colors the same. So this is all of the energy available in the ecosystem. Then once we get up into this primary consumers, we're down to 10%. Okay, now this pyramid isn't drawn to scale, uh, but we're going to get to how the amount of energy available drops at each level. So we've got the producers down here at the bottom, primary consumers, and then after the primary consumers are the secondary consumers and these are omnivores and carnivores okay remember carnivore this is meat okay uh, so the, the carnivores are the ones that will prey on or predate on the herbivores so carnivores are eating herbivores and omnivores can eat both plants or animal. So these guys are more opportunistic. They will eat some plants. These are like bears. Bears will eat berries and wild grasses and shrubs and things like that. And they will also eat other animals. They will predate on uh, smaller game. So now up here at the third level, so if we go from 100 to 10 percent, then we're going to drop from 10 to 1 percent. Okay, very, very little energy. So we can see that only 10 percent of the available energy moves 
from one level to the next. So we're dropping a zero every time. We're dividing by 10 every single time. So if we have 100% of total energy down here, only 10% will move into the secondary level, and then only 1% moves to the top, okay? So there are very few, very few predators up here at the top, and there are a lot of, or of producers down here at the bottom because of the available energy. And so as we can see, an ecosystem is not based simply on the animals that live there. We can, we can describe them based on that, but it's not only that. There are other factors involved. It is a combination of plants and animals, and the, and the availability of energy, and water especially. Again, we're going to go back to that water, okay? So we're looking at an ecosystem that is a combination of the plants and the animals, the organisms that live there, but it's also the availability of energy. So the more producers you have, the more energy is available, and the higher we can go on this trophic scale, and water. If there's no water, this doesn't even begin to take shape because there's there's no way any of those nutrients can be carried throughout the animal's body. So uh, energy transfer is, is pretty simple in that sense. We have three different levels. And after the secondary consumers, you really don't get much higher than tertiary or the third level consumer. Uh, so we're looking at producers, and then you have a couple levels of consumers. That first level are the herbivores, okay? And then we get into the omnivores and the carnivores after that.